Welcome back guys. Today we are going to dive into different types of trade agreements that we have with different countries. Um, and we're not going to get sp super specific on that, but we are going to discuss the differences between free trade and protectionism. And protectionism will be a different video. So today we're just going to focus on free trade. Your target today is I can define free trade and analyze arguments for it. Um, so let's dive in. So free trade is when trade between countries is completely free of restrictions, um, such as tariffs or quotas. And so both countries are able to trade freely, no restrictions, no extra fees, no tariffs, no embargoes. Um, the governments are just like, yeah, trade whatever you want. Businesses can do dealings with each other. Countries can do con uh, business with each other. And there's going to be no regulations on that. And so many countries have what's known as free trade agreements, and that is when two countries come together on a diplomatic basis and set certain trade obligations and rules that will make free trade easier. So um, certain goods that can't have tariffs are only a certain amount of tariffs, certain goods that shouldn't be traded between the countries. Um, and so the U.S. has 14 different free trade F agreements, FTAs, with 20 different countries, and we're going to look at um, a few more specifically in class. So when we look at free trade um, on a graph, it looks a lot like a regular supply and demand graph. So the graph starts only with domestic goods. So um, our supply, the amount of goods and services available for people is right here. And domestic means that's what's available at home. Um, and there we have a quantity for um, the amount of goods available and the price level for those goods. So when global goods are introduced um, with no regulation, that increases the supply available to customers. So let's do that. So let's introduce global goods here. And we're going to go way out here. And this is going to be known as S global. Because of free trade, there's no restrictions and that increases the supply of goods available for customers in the United States drastically, okay? And so when we now graph our new quantity, it's going to be quantity global, and our new price, it's going to be price global. So what happened to price? Price levels fell a lot and quantity increased, meaning that um, there's new goods on the market, People can buy more things, supply has increased, and the price of those things has gone down because there's competition now. A consumer in America doesn't just have to buy American goods. We've got free trade agreements with a bunch of different countries. We can buy goods from somewhere else, and it won't be expensive. There won't be tariffs um, slapped on top of those. So it increases the amount of things available for customers. So in a sense, it's good. Low prices for consumers. We have competition all over the globe. We can buy something from America, or if we find it cheaper, we can buy it elsewhere. Um, and that's true of consumers in other countries that are importing our goods. It also increased the quantity of goods. So we decrease the price, but increase, increase the quantity, meaning there's more available, there's more options. That means that there's more variety of goods. And that wasn't on our graph, but... If I want um, a backpack, I don't, I'm not limited to just the colors and prints and brands in America. I can look online um, with and, um, or look into this country that we have free trade agreements with. And now I have more options and more variety. And overall, just improve, improve global relationships. So if we're trading with a country, our citizens are getting along our governments are getting along because they're not restricting each other's trade. I mean, if we have a relationship with other countries, it's going to improve a, a trade relationship with other countries. It's going to improve our diplomatic relationship. And that means there's going to be like less wars and fighting and tensions, which is just a side effect. So that's a pretty good argument for free trade. The U.S. is involved in, like I said, 14 different free trade agreements, but I'm just going to hit up some big ones, and we're actually going to look a lot more in depth in class. Um, so NAFTA is the North American Free Trade Agreement, um, and it was put into effect during Bill Clinton's presidency, and it actually ended in July of 2020, and um, it was exactly what it sounds like. So North American is U.S., Mexico, and Canada, and there were certain goods that were going to be traded back and forth, back and forth with no tariffs, completely free of restrictions, and other regulations in this free trade agreement would be that the U.S. has to 
funnel more trade into Mexico and Canada and vice versa on certain goods. So don't sell those goods to other countries, just focus on building up the economies in North America. So it was replaced by President Trump with um, USMCA, so US-Mexico-Canada agreement, which is the current NAFTA. And we're going to compare and contrast. Um, it's kind of like NAFTA 2.0. And then the World Trade Organization is kind of like a free trade agreement. It's just like kind of like a, a talking place for all these countries that are part of the WTO to come together and discuss trade restrictions and bringing down trade barriers. So, um, USMCA, um, the NAFTA 2.0 basically, um, here are some examples from it. So it's not just decreasing tariffs, it's also trying to build up the economy in the US, Mexico, and Canada. So here's an example. Auto parts must be manufactured within the agreement, um, can't be taxed. So anything, let's say we, that we make carburetors and gas tanks in Mexico, but we assemble them in the United States, the, the journey from Mexico to the U.S., those car parts can't be taxed. But in order to really build up the economies of these places, there are other things that could be put into place. Increased labor laws in auto industry to raise workers' pay. So if you have a car manufacturing or car part manufacturing factory in the United States, Mexico, or Canada, um, they are going to be slowly increasing pay over the next 16 years um, in order to bolster a huge sector of our economy, which is making auto parts intellectual property rights for digital products. So intellectual property means that um, if something is invented and it's a new invention, it's kind of like a patent on intellectual property on something that's not quite tangible, like a new digital technology or something like that. Um, those property rights will be um, validated by U.S. if they're in the U.S. by Mexico and Canada and vice versa. And this is going to last 16 years. So we'll go more into depth in, on this in class.